want to give a big thank you to my friend, neighbor, and subscriber, Martha, who watched a video, an older video of mine, not long ago, and she saw that I had some yellow Fiesta wear, and I love Fiesta wear, it's beautiful, I love it, I love the colors. Uh, and she had this pristine, beautiful yellow Fiesta wear cup that she gave to me as a gift. And it's marked on the bottom, uh, HLC Fiesta USA. The Fiesta wear was fun, it was colorful, it just made you feel good to be around it. So Martha, thank you so very much for that beautiful Fiesta cup. I appreciate it more than I can say. Now let's get to the point of the stone. This is about an enigmatic carved rock fetish from Saginaw, Michigan. Now over the decades of hunting Indian artifacts, I have discovered that certain rocks seem to have personality and, yes, even a sort of intelligence. Let me tell you about this stone. Now, I found this stone on a farm field here in Saginaw, Michigan, which frequently yields artifacts from the middle to late woodland and occasionally farther back from the early woodland and uh, late archaic, but not so prolific as the middle and late woodland. So, uh, there, this stone, I believe, was used as a personal fetish perhaps carried by a medicine man in his personal bundle. That's the feeling I get from it when I hold the stone. I mentioned in a video a few weeks ago uh, that, e that when I hold an item which has been charged with someone's personal energy, that my fingers will tingle. Sometimes they'll tingle wildly. Uh, and I hold such a piece now. The stone has many fascinating attributes to it such as its shape. It is a very pleasing shape, either this way as a teardrop, or this way it could even be interpreted as an alien face, though I'm sure that was not the intent of the Native American who carried this with him, or her, but more likely him. <clears throat> so, looking at the edges of this piece, and I, I'm going to show you some close-ups as I'm doing this, but looking at the edges of the piece, you can tell it's easy to see the signs that this had been ground into shape. This, this stone was definitely modified by the hand of the ancient man, as my dear friend Jerry Wagner would say, someone who I miss very, very much. Very, very much. So, it has rather teardrop shape, and that's what first attracted me to it, the shape. But, if you were to take back to the alien thing, if you were to take and put two bulbous eyes on here, slanted, and two little pinpoints for noses and a little slit for mouth, you'd have a perfect gray alien, except it's not gray. <laughs> but uh, I am, as I said, I'm not saying that this represents such an alien, only that it resembles one. Uh, there is, however, a lot going on on both the front and back of this stone, and I was showing you close-ups as I as I'm talking to you. Many of you will remember how much pain I was in uh, last year before my back surgery. It got unbearable. Now, pain medicine helped, but not a lot as I got closer to having the surgery. But it did help So, What did give relief for a short time, though, was using the pointed end of this stone, and I would place it firmly against the area of my spine, uh, that was uh, that was affected by the damage. Okay, so with uh, moderate pressure, not pushing real hard, I would press it against my spine and, and just go rub it up and down on my spine, just in that area, over that painful area. And it would relieve the pain for a short time. Sometimes more than the medicine did, though. And it does seem to possess a positive energy. The left edge on the what I will call the front is a semicircle that resembles to me a bow carved into it. Next to that on the right is a line that has what very much looks like an arrow point over here. Uh, these are obvious, but as you study the surface and meditate upon it, well, as I've done that, I've, I see many different designs in the intricate markings on this stone, and they are indeed intricate markings. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, there's a lot going on here. 
For example, at the pointed end are two small depressions. There are, right there. Two small, two small depressions. Um, next to that, on the right, is a line. As I study the surface on both sides, there are many intricate designs that have been carved into this stone. I do not anyway believe that these are naturally occurring. These did not happen from uh, being pushed along by the glaciers. This did not happen by a plow hitting it. These were intentionally put in to this particular stone. Fascinating example. The engravings are on both the front and back. The stone frequently, this is really weird, okay, the, the stone frequently goes missing and no matter how much I search for it, it's gone seemingly until it wants to be found. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but sometimes that is exactly how it seems. Where does it go? It seems to just disappear. Um, and uh, it has been at times gone for as much as a couple months only to reappear again when I least expect it. Now, stones and rocks are quite incredible, absolutely incredible. Sadly, archaeologists would consider that stones and rocks are inert. Uh, the Native Americans, though, always in touch with nature, believe rocks and stones are indeed alive. I rather agree with them, to be honest, about them being alive, in a sense. Scientists believe they know what constitute life's, uh, life's, what constitutes life, and rock doesn't by their conception. Man as a species, I believe, is woefully lacking in the ability to think outside the box and as such has limited knowledge of life uh, of life in their own concepts. I believe the Native American people are free thinkers and see the potential for life in many areas of the mainstream that the mainstream will poop off. There have been a number of stones in my collection over the years that have possessed an energy from the person who used it or the person that owned it. And this is definitely what I feel from this unique little piece. And it, I usually carry it with me now. Um, I usually actually even hang on to it while I go to sleep at night. It sounds kind of silly. I don't know why I do. It just, uh, there's just something about this stone that is so unique. And under di different lightings. You know, sitting here with the one light directed this way, I see, you know, I can see much more in here than I was, than I'm able to see just, you know, looking at direct light shining down or whatever. So it's good with an artifact or something that you think is an artifact to look at it in different lighting, different kinds of lightings to see what you can actually see. Sometimes there are, there are small, in, small line engravings on things that you don't, they're so lightly done that you don't see them only under the right lighting conditions. So this is what I wanted to share with you about this very unique stone, very unique relic artifact, and I hope you've enjoyed looking at, with, at it with me. Um, so, there, like I said, there were a number of other stones that displayed amazing power within themselves, as this one does. I remember when, when uh, I first started digging for artifacts up in Oscoda back in mid to late 1980s, I dug up a cache of items. And there was a long pestle-like stone, but it was a rolling-type pestle, not a pounding-type pestle. And there were many other pieces. They had been buried in one single spot, m most likely with the intent of the person who buried it to come back to it when they returned to this site, because they changed uh, seasonally, they would move around. So they planned on coming back to this. For some reason or another, they didn't. But that rolling pestle, I could pick it up, and it just, it was a lot like electrifying. Um, just certain pieces, though. Not everything. All right. So you all probably think I'm totally nuts now. Um, hey, we all have to be a little bit to survive in this world today. No, really, all it takes to survive in this world today is Jesus Christ, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, and the Bible. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this. Love you much, and I will see you again real, real soon. God bless.